You see that actually over there where my eyeglasses should be resting when I'm not put squarely on my face? Yeah, I haven't been hydrating myself these past couple of days during the holidays. And I'm going to start taking better care of myself so I don't look like an ass clown when I make these videos. So the past couple of times I've talked about the JQ and merchantism, which is my lighter, more friendly PC word. I've mainly spoke about it from a Zionistic perspective, but you know, the Zionistic side, as I've said before, is dying off once we get to the millennial generation of for what has become incrementally more powerful is globalism. Much to the point that every ideology we have is almost shilling for these international global corporations. That affects us more now. And when we talk about globalism, we usually hear globalism from someone like an Alex Jones, who will name all the names he needs to do until he names the most important one, which is the Jew. He will never do that. He will chastise you for doing that. And that's why he falls shorter than even Stefan Molyneux. He's far from the typical alt writer. Inexcusably so. Stefan Molyneux will at least dog whistle, and will at least ask the hard questions to any Jew he debates. But not Alex Jones. Alex Jones is owned by the Disney Corporation, if you go back enough degrees of separation. He's not opposition, or he's controlled opposition. But the big point that I want to say is that in terms of being a secular religion, globalism is powerful to shit. It has so many prophets. It has so many people of authoritative titles who will show for it. We got the Pope. We got the Dalai Lama. Even Donald Trump, who opposed things such as NAFTA when he was running an election, a campaign, once he got elected, post-inauguration, he started defending and supporting and making moves for these things, even saying that he's a nationalist and a globalist. Thoughts, hoes, have said less contradictory things. That's crazy. And whether you're a libertarian, an alt-writer, a conservative, a neoliberal, whatever it is, at some point, you have shilled for an international corporation engaging in abusive behavior to its consumers or to its employees. And we're seeing that now, like, but in the past, my weakness was the minimum wage issue. I spoke about all the inefficiencies tied to minimum wage, but I refused to look at what some of the libertarians themselves were telling me, which is, it's a non-issue because now that these people are on government assistance, because they're not getting paid good enough, well enough. And that was food stamps back then. Now it's going to be universal basic income, which is going to fuel our bug man working class. None of that, just word by word, is good news. And this is a real issue. Now we have topics such as net neutrality, where I've seen idiocy on both sides. On the pro-net neutrality side, I've seen Reddit essentially frame what the future with net neutrality will, without net neutrality, look like from the perspective of ISPs behaving like AAA game developers charging us DOCs and microtransactions. That's not how it's going to be. No country has their unregulated internet working like that. However, I've seen people becoming anti-neutrality just because 
a lot of soy boys and a lot of neck beards are pro net neutrality. You can't be knee jerked into supporting or opposing something just because the opposition might look a little funny. That's how we end up with partisan style thinking. And a big thing about the alt right is that you want to break out of that style of thinking. You want to address truth. You want to address real issues. You want to have some character. And we've already dealt with a lot of deregulation from things like the FCC, which has turned this big media into a giant conglomerate. And Disney recently has been making moves that are very questionable. They bought out 21st Century Fox. That's not something to shell for. Amazon right now is making questionable moves. It is buying city infrastructure. It's making moves that, like, I've been in a part of New York City that's getting bought out by a large corporation, not Amazon, but Columbia. And as a result of that, I have got zucked out of my own property. I've been zucked on Facebook once. But this time I'm getting, twice actually, this time I'm getting zucked out of my home, and that's why I'm here in the Bronx now. These big corporations are getting more powerful. It's not just small businesses having to rely on their social platforms in order to have their businesses. It's also them having to rely on the global corporations' infrastructure and their real property that they own that they got to look out for now. And this is not stuff to show for, because our younger generations, my generation, this is going to be more and more of a problem that we've inherited. We're not going to inherit Zionism, but we're going to inherit this. And it's a very powerful religion because I've defended abusive policies from global corporations. You've probably done it, and if you haven't, a comment so that I can, you know, give a love react. No love react gang. But all of this is stuff to be worried about. And they cannot think of a force of jewelry besides communism from the last century that's going to lead to more catastrophe. On a smaller scale though, because Communism had the whole lot of more. I've said it so you can phonetically type it, but it's probably not pronounced that way. And nothing's beating that. But aside from this, when I talk about globalism, that is definitively the biggest secular religion there is right now. Mulbug says that it's probably progressive liberalism. Throw that out the window. This. So this has been your boy, Mr. Wonka Seven. Suck my dick.